we're going to start off um, the semester with a lecture about what the medical scribe position entails and the responsibilities. So the medical scribe, the role and responsibilities. While I go over some of this basic material, I want you to keep some of these questions in mind. Uh, what is the medical scribe? Um, you might have some knowledge of the position itself, um, but I want you to be thinking about that and listening for these answers. Uh, how was the role first about, developed? In what settings might you expect to see a scribe? How does a medical scribe interact with patients? And what are the responsibilities of a medical scribe? Why are they important? So what is the medical scribe? This is the most basic question of the, of the class. So a medical scribe is a documentation specialist who is trained on the basics of completing a medical chart in the EHR. So most of you should know by now that an EHR is an electronic health record. Uh, they generally will stand in the background of an exam room while the physician or provider interacts with a patient, allowing that provider to focus on their encounter while the scribe takes notes. Uh, and documents throughout. They also retrieve lab and imaging results. They know the basics of chart coding, which can get kind of complex, um, but that is the basic definition of what a medical scribe does. So if you control click this YouTube link, this will bring you to a longer video. The first few minutes are really good at explaining um, the benefits of the position, you know, perhaps some of your future plans will line up with these gentlemen's plans when it comes to going on to PA school, med school, etc. Um, but it's a really interesting take from medical scribes on what a medical scribe's job and role and responsibilities are. So a little bit of history about how the position came to be. There's various uh, postulations of when the actual position of medical scribe came to fruition. In 1999, the advisory board company reviewed the practice of medical scribe in emergency medicine specifically. The, they determined it was good practice and highly effective in, discre in decreasing length of stay uh, of patients in the emergency room and increasing overall patient satisfaction, which um, we'll talk about later on in the course is very important when it comes to reimbursement. Um, still, medical sp scribe programs were still few and far between until the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. So stay tuned and we'll talk about how that kind of changed um, the outlook of medicine. So it was with this act that U.S. Congress pushed for the implementation of EMRs, often synonymous with EHR, so electronic medical records, which caused um, you know, hospitals to begin or facilities to begin to look at uh, documentation a little differently. It included incentives and penalties related to the initiation of EHRs, e EMRs. Uh, change is very hard, especially when people have been doing it the same way for decades. Um, so many physicians were pushing back and unable or unwilling to adapt to this new tech-savvy tech environment, uh, causing a sharp decline in productivity, which then led to a decline in patient satisfaction, therefore de a decline in reimbursement, which is, you know, a huge problem. Efficiency in various medical settings was seen to decline as well um, with the initiation of these EMRs, EHRs. Medical scribes to the rescue. So the addition of medical scribes to the healthcare team was shown to recover profits and patient satisfaction and to increase some of those numbers by 10%. So not only did we recover back to baseline with the addition of medical scribes in the work environment, but some places saw that increased productivity. Now let's talk about some of the responsibilities of the medical scribe. So again, 
a medical scribe is a documentation specialist, so it's in the name. Documentation is a huge responsibility of the medical scribe. So in some cases, the position is strictly clerical, where you're hired as a medical scribe, that is all you will do, um, and that is all that is expected from you. Um, what that means is if you are in a strictly clerical position, you are not to be involved in direct patient care. You are not to help patients go to the bathroom. You are not to put hands on patients, etc. We are seeing more and more, especially in the Fairbanks community, um, a need for cross-trained individuals. So people that are medical assistants and medical scribes. And in that case, you know, based on the description of your job, the description of the duties, um, your agreement with your employer, you know, some days you might be strictly clerical, some days you might be patient care, some days you might be both. So that is something that is figured out on the end of you and your employer. Uh, once you've completed, you know, your MA classes, your medical scribe classes, that kind of thing. Um, and the only differentiation there is that if you are uh, hired as a strictly clerical medical scribe it is all that is stated in your job description um, that is what is agreed upon at time of hire you have to make sure that that is the only way you're interacting uh, is in a strictly clerical uh, way because then there are liability things involved with that um, if you get involved in direct patient care and something goes awry um, you observe the patient uh, physician interaction and document the encounter throughout you'll learn that each person each physician each provider will have their own preferences and how you document for them and that's something you just learn from that that facility that physician um, they'll tell you how they want things worded etc so there's a little there will be a learning curve as you interact with each new provider work at new, each new facility etc you have to keep in mind that the medical record is considered a legal document. Therefore, it is very important that it is accurate. This means that if you have a question, uh, wait until the physician's done interacting with the patient and ask the question. You know, whether or not they get annoyed by that, who cares? Because your name's still gonna be on the chart somewhere um, and you wanna make sure that everything's accurate. More on documentation, being that it is a legal document, spelling and grammar accuracy are very important. So as you do work in this course, as you do work in your other courses, I really want you to focus on having proper spelling and proper grammar. Spelling can be kind of tricky sometimes, especially with the names of medications, the names of disease processes. Those are the kind of things you just learn in practice. Um, generally, if you're working in a specialty practice or in a certain area of a hospital, you're going to be using a lot of the same dis disease words, uh, disease related words, medications, etc. Um, if you're unsure about a detail, as I was saying, or, or exam finding to record in the chart, asking the physician for clarification is imperative. Limit the use of abbreviations and only use approved abbreviations. So, there's in general approved abbreviations for um, healthcare as a whole, but each place you work at, each facility you work at, will, should have a list of abbreviations that they have approved uh, for use in their, their medical charts. Um, again, generally, it's the same across the board. Some other duties, other suggestions of how to operate in this position. Um, having a pre-patient and post-patient checklist. So the pre-patient checklist is just how you're going to determine that you are documenting on the correct patient. Um, whether that's signified by the room they're in, their initials. Obviously, if, especially um, if you're printing it on a piece of paper, you don't want to necessarily use identifying information because um, if you're to lose that, you know, it's a HIPAA violation because you're just having patients information free floating around whatever work area you're, you're in. So just it's you have to figure out your own way to be sure that you're documenting on the correct patient. Eliminate as many distractions as possible. So if appropriate and if it's OK with a patient, uh, consider turning off the television to eliminate distractions. Um, high 
uh, my name's so and so. I'll be the medical scribe for you know for this encounter. Do you mind if I mute this? Um, and generally, in most cases, cases patients are going to say yes. Post patient checklist. So if once you're done with the encounter or for that part of the encounter, the initial encounter between the physician and the patient, you know, figure out a way to make a list of what was ordered, what labs were ordered, what x-rays were, you know, imaging was ordered. And that way you can keep track of what's, what results have returned, uh, that you've alerted the physician and, and verify and record what tests are being ordered, check off tests as they are resulted. Um, and you need to do this perhaps on your own list, but also in the, in the chart. You can ask the physician for information like the EKG, pulse ox, so, uh, or the rhythm strip information to record in the chart. Patient on five lead AK, bedside EKG or bedside monitor, uh, sinus rhythm. You know, if, if you're not equipped to interpret, you know, those things, always ask the physician so that everything is recorded accurately. So keeping track of tests, alert your physician of abnormal lab values and pull up previous studies in the chart if they exist for comparison. So if you're in somewhere like the emergency department and this person, you know, has maybe come here once or twice a year for the past four years, you're going to have a lot of data um, so we can compare, uh, you know, the current lab results to previous lab results. You know, maybe there's somebody that hemoglobin is always you know, slightly below normal. Um, let your physician know when radiology images are available. And if able, pull up those images for them to review. Uh, not everybody has access to the correct computer to pull up those images. Um, and part of your responsibility is really helping the encounter stay on track and to move along. So if labs are taking longer than expected, if you're working in an acute care facility, uh, where labs, especially in an emergency department, where labs should have a quick turnover, um, call the lab to see if there's an issue. Sometimes perhaps there wasn't enough blood in the tube or the blood in the tube was hemolyzed and they can't use it um, and there's just a breakdown in communication, but then you can alert, you know, the proper staff that it needs to be redrawn. Hey, I just spoke to the lab. They said this sample is hemolyzed. Can we draw another one? You know, whether that be the phlebotomist or the nurse. Um, special consideration. So if a patient asks you for directions to the bathroom and you're unsure if they will need a urine sample, you can inquire with the staff, the nursing staff, or ask the patient to do so to just leave a sample, but don't handle the sample yourself unless otherwise stated in your job description. If you're somebody that's, uh, you know, cross-trained CNA med scribe, cross-trained MA med scribe, you have learned and are trained to handle samples. If you are not, do not handle it. As I said, you know, part of your role is keeping the physician on track. Um, keep in mind what the plan of care is. You know, is this patient going to be admitted to the hospital? Um, if so, make sure that all proper admission criteria is properly documented. Um, is this patient going to get discharged? If so, compile the discharge instructions. You would never give the discharge instructions to the patient. You would just have them prepared, especially for, um, you know, common illnesses. They're probably it's probably easy. There's probably a database to pull up in the computer with generalized um, discharge instructions and anything special. The provider, the physician, the nurse can add on themselves. Um, but you just have that ready for them to to give to the patient. Um, make sure you ask these questions to keep the charts up to date. So you're just constantly listening, talking with your physician to make sure that we're keeping everything up to date in the chart so that once they're, your part of the encounter is done, their part of the encounter is done, the chart is as complete as possible. If the patient has previous visits, make sure you're pulling up those pertinent records so the physician can readily review them. You know, a patient shows up in the ER and they were actually just here 
two days before and five days before that, make sure all of those encounters are pulled up so your physician has a better storyline of what's going on with this patient. So the scribability checklist, electronic medical and health record navigation. So this will be slightly different from place to place, facility to facility, um, because they don't all use the same one. However, you sh it's something that if you're technologically inclined, you're going to pick up pretty quickly. If you're some if you're someone that already works as a medical assistant or a CNA, you might already be familiar with the places uh, EHR, EMR. Um, we're going to learn about HIPAA and patient privacy. Again, some of this will be review, but it is very important. The flow and function of various clinical settings, so the emergency department, urgent cares, the outpatient settings, basic medical terminology, general anatomy and physiology, the methodology of writing a good HPI, so history of present illness, awareness of billing principles as they pertain to the medical note, and common medication. So this is stuff we're going to go over throughout the duration of the course. So things you should not do as a strictly clerical medical scribe. So this is in the case, again, that your position, as stated in your job descriptions and duties, is strictly clerical. Uh, you should not make any physical contact with patients. Again, unless otherwise explicitly stated in your job description. You should not pass medical information between medical professionals. Um, the physician shouldn't be like, hey, go tell the nurse this. That's not in your descript job description. Um, you should not give medical advice. Um, you really shouldn't give medical advice unless you're in a position um, like a nurse, a doctor, etc. You should not render any medical care to patients. You should not act as a translator. So in most medical facilities, uh, in clinics, there are translator services, and it can be very tempting to be like, oh, this patient only speaks Spanish, I speak Spanish, I'm just going to help. However, there are some liability associated with that. So in most cases, translators that work in those services, who work in those facilities, have to be signed off um, so that there is less liability that the, the facility knows and understands that that person understands the proper medical terminology to use when speaking to patients uh, in that language. You should not enter orders or complete prescriptions. Some scribes are restricted to only a clerical role in conjunction with the physician. So that means you're not charting for the nurse, you're not charting for the CNA, you are documenting solely for the, solely for the provider. Um, so this is when it's helpful to just make sure that you know um, exactly what your job description says, exactly what duties it includes, um, so that if somebody asks you to work out of that scope, you can say, I'm sorry, you know, that's not in my job description. Um, people might give you pushback, but you want to help protect yourself and protect uh, the facility you're working in from, you know, possible liability issues. So as we move through this course and as you move through your other courses, um, I want you to think about what your career looks like. What are your goals during uh, this program, your courses, and after? Some of your short-term goals and long-term goals. I think it's important just to be thinking about these things so that um, you can kind of know what direction you need to go. That's not to say that um, having goals is set in stone. Um, there are multiple ways to be successful. So give yourself leeway when it comes to these goals, but having a general direction to go is, is important. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me.